Have you wondered why more and more musicians are carrying around iPads every single day? Especially if you're a music student, you can't go a day without seeing these iPads everywhere from classes to performing on the stage. Even if you're not in music school, you probably have noticed a lot of professional musicians carrying these around at gigs or even at symphony orchestra performances. So what's the hype around iPads? Is it actually an investment that's worth getting into for your professional work as a musician? I hope to answer all these questions today as we unpack what my experiences are carrying around an iPad as a uh, graduated music student and moving on to my master's degree, as well as someone who gigs professionally and needs to carry around a lot of sheet music. I was mainly curious because I saw a lot of my peers in music school carry around iPads when they were uh, at lab performances or at recitals, and I was wondering why they didn't just use traditional sheet music, you know, paper and um, three ring binders to carry around their music. But once I pulled the plug and eventually bought one on impulse, uh, then I noticed how useful they actually are in my day-to-day -day workflow as a student and a musician. It was in my sophomore year, so my second year in my undergraduate degree, uh, where I got an iPad Air, and uh, that kind of transformed my whole workflow around how I uh, took notes in classes and uh, carried around my music for performances. Okay, so some of the obvious benefits about carrying an iPad around are having an infinite music library at your fingertips. Let's be honest, sheet music is heavy, it's bulky and hard to carry, a lot of it around in your backpack for performances. Um, so having an iPad where everything is digital, you can store millions of scores potentially, you know, at your fingertips in your uh, file manager in your iPad or, you know, accessing them, accessing them free through IMSLP or other online websites where you can download music. There's the ease of obtaining scores like online or scanning physical scores that you have, especially if you're in an ensemble in music school like choir, band, or orchestra, or anything else, you can just scan the physical music they normally give out into your iPad easily through built -in, uh, the built-in notes app, and then you can have a digital copy of your music and you won't worry about damaging or losing the original. And if you're in the Apple ecosystem, you have a MacBook or an iPhone, the ease of AirDrop and transferring files from one device to the next is kind of a game changer that I didn't expect. It's so easy to quickly send files from your computer, like homework assignments or worksheets, and you can just airdrop them directly to the iPad where you can annotate them and complete assignments, you know, with handwritten tools. No, I'm just kidding. That's not real. Obviously, the portability and lightweight factor is a huge benefit. Uh, I kind of started on a journey in high school of not carrying around a lot of physical paper and uh, folders and notebooks and just tried to going digital um, through various digital notebooks and uh, scanning my documents to the cloud where I can access them from anywhere in case I forgot one of my assignments at home. Uh, that fail-safe option of having cloud storage has been a game changer uh, and the same thing applies to your music scores. And of course this is a more economical and sustainable option compared to carrying around the hundreds of sheets of paper that you have to carry around um, as a musician and student. Um, so that's just a personal thing, but you can consider whether that's an important factor for you. And for me, it's just a peace of mind knowing that when I look into my bag, it's not this mess of crumpled up papers or dozens of folders and notebooks that I have to sift through for notes. I can easily just have one device that carries all of my academic life and my musician life, and I can actually search through notes even if it's handwritten. Of course, the ease of annotating and marking up scores is made easier than ever. I mentioned that having a digital version of your music means that you can easily mark them up um, in different ways without physically affecting the physical copy or the master file of it. Um, I think that's an un unexpected benefit of having digital scores. And of course, there's the option of sharing those annotated scores with others. Um, for example, if you're a director and you want to make certain bowings in a part, you can easily just send out that one file um, to other musicians who have the iPad and it makes it a lot easier. Another benefit is creating set lists for specific gigs, and we're going to delve into this later with the apps that I'll recommend. And in the same vein, turning pages is going to be a thing I'm going to get into soon, um, but the ease of doing that on a tablet 
is exponentially easier than doing it physically and worrying about missing a page turn. Here are some of the non-negotiable apps and tools that I would recommend, as well as some important considerations when buying an iPad. Storage is not really a huge consideration, but you might want to think about upgrading to more than 64 gigabytes of storage, which is usually the lowest tier option. Um, of course, a lot of our uh, files are just going to be PDF files, which don't take up a ton of storage, but if you have the ability to splurge on 128 or 512 or even a terabyte of storage, uh, that won't hurt you. But of course there is the cloud storage option of paying per month to get infinite cloud storage, which is kind of the route that I chose, but not a huge factor in deciding to buy one. But a factor that you might want to consider when deciding to pick up an iPad for your music stuff is the model that you choose. What you want to go for is an iPad that has the M series chip. So it started out with the M1, there's an M2 version and now an M4 version. Um, these basically came out in 2020 and they're optimized Apple silicon chips that have improvements in uh, performance as well as battery life and that optimization. The first iPad that I got was not an M series chip. It was actually the iPad Air, the one released right before the M series chips came out and the battery life on that thing was abysmal, as well as performance. So luckily most of the iPads on the market today have the M-series chip, so look for any of those and don't settle with any of the previous chips. Battery life was one of the main factors that made me pick up one of the newer iPads. So this is the 13-inch uh, new iPad Pro with the M4 chip, and it is extremely overkill for music stuff, and I'll talk about some cheaper alternatives that you can get. Um, but this has uh, that Apple Silicon chip, which the battery life is not, you know, as good as a laptop, obviously, but I can have it run for a full day of heavy use um, and more than enough for loading PDFs on my iPad for uh, performances. Now, one of the other misconceptions about picking up iPads is that you want to have a more portable package, so that means go with the smaller size. So um, that would mean the 10.9 inch or the 11 inch for the new iPad. Uh, models. Um, but for musicians, I think it's really valuable to have a larger size iPad for your work. I had the 10.9 inch size, which was almost the same size as real US letter size paper, um, 8.5 by 11, which is the size of paper. I realized that my eyes are getting worse and worse every single year. Um, having your music, um, you know, arm's length or two in front of you on the music stand during performances. It's hard to see all those notes with a smaller screen size, and I think it's really valuable to upgrade to the 12.9 inch or the 13 inch size, uh, depending on the model. It makes a huge difference. You can actually load up uh, your score um, horizontally and have two pages on um, you know, the landscape edge uh, just by having a larger screen size, and it's a huge benefit that I highly recommend even if that means spending a little bit extra. And by getting this 13 inch size that I have, it's exactly the same size as a normal sheet of US letter size paper, which makes it uh, look way more natural on the piano stand or on the music stand when I read music. So what are my recommendations for iPad models? Especially for students and uh, musicians who are likely on a budget because we're musicians. I actually recommend the brand new iPad Air model. This is the Pro, get the Air. It comes with a new larger 12.9 inch screen, um, which is exactly the size that you want uh, for musicians um, and mimicking that real paper feel. It's a much more affordable option um, if you want to get that larger screen size and it has the M2 chip in it, which is totally fine for um, any needs for a musician. If you don't want to get the newest model and you want to save just a little bit extra, there are refurbished models of previous iPad Pro models on the market uh, that will probably be comparable to the Air or even cheaper. Um, they have the M-Series chip um, and that could, could totally suffice for what you need. So some apps that I highly recommend, and these are non-negotiables that you should get if you're a musician and going to be having most of your workflow done on the iPad and interacting with PDF sheet music. The first app is called Fourscore, and this is one of the most invaluable apps that I use every single day to interact with my sheet music. So one of the benefits of this app is turning pages. So here's my app, and I have one of my pieces of music loaded up on here. And just by tapping on the corners, you can easily transition to the next page. Like there's a little page curl animation. It's so cute. Um, and 
A lot of music students, when they have iPads, don't know that this is a more efficient way of turning pages compared to scrolling on a PDF um, viewer. Uh, and that can really hinder your performance, especially if it's a faster piece of music. So this is a completely underrated app that all music students should get if they have a tablet. Other than the tap, there's actually facial recognition features. I think in the, there's an upgraded version of this where you can wink or smirk the corner of your mouth to turn pages. This would be especially useful if you physically cannot uh, tap the page or, for example, you can't even use um, a pedal turner, which I'll talk about in a second if you're playing like organ or something, and you just do a facial gesture, it can use the cameras to detect it and turn the pages hands-free or completely autonomously. But about the pedal turner that I was talking about, um, you see a lot of musicians that are magically turning pages while they're playing the piano or playing another instrument where they can't physically tap the page because it's impossible. So they have a tool that allows them to use Bluetooth connection and uh, your feet to actually turn the page. So it's a piece of hardware. I reviewed some models on my channel, but this is just a generic one. And all you do is be on the floor uh, with your left foot if you're playing piano, and you just click and this goes to the next page. It does the exact same thing. So if I turn it on and load up my score, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just pressing it with my hand here and it's turning the pages for me. And this has been one of the most <laughs> invaluable things for me as a, as a pianist, actually. Um, turning pages is one of the most stressful things during a performance because sometimes the windows of turning the page are completely, uh, they're really difficult. It, there's a very small window of opportunity to get it right. This way I can have the worst page turn in the world and I can be playing with both hands and I can just tap with my foot and the page turns like magic. Super underrated. It can be helpful for musicians of any kind, actually except for maybe vocalists. Of course, there's the uh, annotating factor in Foursquare. So easily using my pencil, I can mark up things. There's so many different tools in Foursquare that I haven't even explored. Super simple and I use it all the time to mark up things in my music. But one of the best benefits of using an app like this is having um, set lists for your music for specific gigs. So I do a lot of accompanying work, so I have a ton of set lists for um, specific services. Um, so for example, this is a Christmas service that I played um, last year, and it has all of the music for this gig loaded up on here on a set list that I can create. I pull from my entire library of hundreds of scores, and then I curate them. I can scan in music from books and other um, hymns and I can just load them up in here by title and there's actually metadata that each piece can have that I didn't really load in like composers, uh, labels, key, um, difficulty and stuff um, which has been nice to do um, but mainly you can keep it simple. You load up a score like this and it advances to the next piece in the set list so you don't have to scroll through your file manager to find the next piece. It's all consecutive and really easy to find. And if you have a larger multi-movement piece and you want to find specific movements, you can actually make bookmarks of specific movements. So here's The Sacred Veil by Eric Whitaker, beautiful piece. I can load up um, each movement. I had to set this up manually, but instead of scrolling through this 100 page document to find movement seven, I can easily just go to my bookmarks and go to movement seven immediately. To save so much rehearsal time, you're not going to have to be fumbling through your music. It's instantly right there. Um, huge benefit. One of my favorite things to do with set lists is you can actually share whole set lists. Uh, this is really beneficial if someone else has Foursquare on their iPad, or even you can share the set list as an entire PDF, including your annotations that you make. So here's that midnight service uh, for that mass. I click on the share tool here and I can share the entire set list or even generate um, a text list of the entire, um, you know, all the all the, the songs, create a set list for players. There are so many versatile options um, when using Foursquare. It's probably the best tool that you can get if you're going to get an iPad as a musician. Okay, some accessories that I highly recommend too if you have an iPad. The first one is an Apple Pencil. Um, I know that there's going to be a lot of hate for this because they're so expensive to get these first party accessories, um, but, but as a musician, um, you know the importance of having a pencil on your stand. You've been in an ensemble, the 
conductor is always asking if everyone has their pencils um, and they're always sharing valuable information that you know that they want to relay to you and you need to translate that into your music by writing it down um, so there are third party ones but the benefits of the first party ones of course they just work seamlessly with the iPad but for example this one snaps on magnetically to the side and it charges I just highly recommend the first party accessories uh, just for compatibility and longevity reasons, uh, I've never had a problem with them. Second, uh, this is more optional, but if you want to connect a Bluetooth keyboard to your iPad, if you want to do more than just the annotating thing, um, I use my iPad a lot for admin work like email, um, for writing and research. Um, so especially if you're a student, this is a great option. And I'm going to show you the first party Magic Keyboard accessory that is new. Um, way too expensive. Uh, you can see how much it costs. Um, I don't want to think about it. But great accessory. It totally transforms the, the experience of using a tablet for laptop-y type tasks. Um, but if you're just going to be using it for your music, um, not really planning on doing any serious work on it, then it's not completely necessary. Um, but any Bluetooth keyboard will work, including a mouse that so you can link up to it. Of course, I mentioned the Bluetooth pedal turner. There's um, cheap ones on Amazon that you can get. Um, highly recommend. It's a great tool, um, especially if you're a pianist or musician who has trouble turning pages like I do. There's a huge learning curve to it. I know it took me a few weeks to get used to having another thing to do with my feet while I'm playing, um, but after you get through it, um, everyone does. Uh, it's super invaluable for you, and by having that, you know, one less factor to worry about, um, I've been able to increase my musicality. Uh, focus more on uh, emoting versus trying to technically perform something um, on a tough page turn. Okay, so in closing, none of these tools are cheap. Um, this specific setup is thousands of dollars, but I think of it as an investment really. If you're gonna be doing this professionally or semi-professionally, and um, you need to have tools that mimic uh, that workflow, that's really the case for any trade. Um, if you're gonna be working as a, an electrician or a, a carpenter or a painter, you need to buy tools to get that work done, even if it's going to cost you a lot of money. It's just the, the minimum that you need to do. Um, and if you invest in um, high quality equipment like this that'll last years to come, I don't think it'll ever steer you wrong to each their own and on their own budget. You have to assess whether this is, if this is um, financially viable. If you're just going into music school and you're looking to get uh, you know, an iPad to supplement your schoolwork and also help with your music stuff, I think it's a great option. It's just another thing that you have to um, consider if this is going to be important for you. Um, and I found that it really was. Um, but I do have to preface that it's not a laptop replacement. I have had a lot of software issues. Um, as a composer specifically, I can't run um, full versions of notation software on these iPads. Even though some of them have these like iPad versions of them, they're not fully featured and the workflow is completely different. Um, a lot of software that I've had to use in school um, during college was not compatible on this you know, iPad OS. So you still probably need a laptop if you're planning on doing um, serious, intense work. These things are not really for that. So that's why I have a laptop that does all the hard, heavy lifting and can run all the software. It's more of a addition to my laptop that is more portable and more fun to use. And it's the perfect form factor for musicians uh, reading music. So having this iPad setup has helped me maintain a really portable setup. Uh, my back isn't in uh, turmoil by carrying around heavy textbooks all the time. I can just carry one tablet and possess the entire um, all the tools that I need for being a student uh, or being a musician. Not only is it just portable, it's more efficient. You can load up all the scores, you can have set lists. Um, I've just increased my productivity and I had to think less about what to bring to gigs. I can just pick this up off the table and go and knowing that I have everything set up, I don't have to find um, the specific binder for that gig. I can just get up and go, which has been so stress relieving. I even got my dad to get an iPad. He's a professional musician as well. He's a, a choir director right now, and uh, he deals. He's dealt with sheet music his entire life and carrying around uh, dozens of binders for different uh, situations for his gigs. Um, and getting him a, 
larger iPad that has four score and all the set lists. It's just been a complete game changer for him and increased his workflow and productivity a hundredfold. So if that's not a reason to get one, I don't know what it is. If you got an iPad for your workflow as a student or a musician, leave your insights down below. Some things that I didn't mention or other considerations to think of. Um, I'm sure it'd be helpful to the rest of the community. There's also links for specific recommendations of iPad models down below in case you're curious about picking one up for the next school year. And if you're a composer and you're looking um, for other tools that you might need while you're going into your first year, or if you're just curious about what I use for my tools as a composer and musician, a link to my six essentials for music composition majors. Um, check that video out next to get all the insights that I got um, knowing what's most important as a student. Oh, thank you so much for watching and keep writing.